Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz saxophonist Caroline Davis. We caught up with her in New York in the middle of April 2020 during the COVID-19 quarantine to discuss what has been going on. She delved into plans she had, things she looks forward to, and a whole lot more in between. Enjoy. We're, uh, I guess, just like everybody else, just kind of in a wait and see mode right now. Yeah. You know, are you in the heart of Manhattan or are you... In Brooklyn, where exactly are you at? Uh, yeah, I'm in Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of the ground zero epicenter of everything. Yeah, it's it's hard sometimes to, in in it's in a daily sense. Um, it's it's hard sometimes um, from day to day to understand the severity of what's going on um, unless you're going past the hospital in some way yeah so if you we we have um, we're fortunate enough to have a car here so we've driven past the hospitals and we've driven around quite a bit and it's difficult to to see what's going on at the hospitals it's kind of mayhem you know with yeah. ambulances outside of all the hospitals all the time and then cones are kind of blocking some of the parts of the street in order for that to that process to be to not slow down um and then there's there's at, at all the hospitals that i've seen there are these 18 wheeler cabinets from 18 wheeler trucks yeah um and i'm sure that 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 that's there for all the people who are passing away yeah, and that was something. I have a friend that works in the local hospital system here. They were talking about getting really ramped up about a week and a half ago and kind of, you know, just trying to prepare for what's going on. And now as far as, I mean, the numbers are going up still, but, you know, we've been, I think we got a pretty good feed on staying home and being consistent about it here, so... There is hope that hopefully it'll trail off here soon and we start seeing some daylight. But our official mandate of stay at home is through May 15th. Okay. And what city are you in? I am actually, I just moved in January. I was in uh, a little town called Belton, which is about 45 minutes from downtown Kansas City. Now I'm in another city, the home of Pat Metheny, Lee Summit, Missouri. And okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it, that's about 25 minutes from the city. So, right. um, you know, and of course in the suburbs, you know, there, the, the, there's just not the amount of numbers. It's always going to be in the urban epicenter. So we're not seeing those kinds of things happening in the suburbs, so to speak. So, yeah. um, but, uh, at any rate, um, we're just kind of hopeful and, you know, I don't know. I think half the time I'm trying to get some news and see what's going on. And when I do, I actually get more confused as to the yeah. direction of what's going on because you have federal, then you have states, and every state's operating differently. So you're just not quite sure what's kind of a, a blanket mandate. So, um, yeah. But at any rate, I really did want to reach out during this time and kind of talk to the jazz community because I know the, you know, the music has been silenced. There's a lot that's going on, not only with jazz musicians, but with artists all over the place. So I just kind of wanted to reach out and just kind of get an idea of what you're doing during this time and what people can do to support artists. Yeah. And, um, yeah. No, so go ahead, yeah. I. It's been up and down for me. So some days I feel inspired to tackle... Some, some goals that I have for myself. Um, it's easier to rely on all of the work that I have that's coming in that are requests from people. Um, but otherwise, my own creative work, you know, for example, my composing and my own creative output, the music that I'm writing, it's been really difficult for me to 
focus on that. Um, I just haven't really felt very... Um, I haven't felt like sitting down and writing at all. <laughs> so yeah. it's been a little bit hard for me to do that. But I feel that shifting a little bit. Recently I've been... Just every day recently I've been kind of touching in, checking in with with myself and at least putting myself in the position of sitting down in front of my instrument and in front of the keyboard to write and check in with myself. But it's it's getting better, but it's very slow um, because of this process of grieving that we're going through. I, I did lose a lot of work and a lot of opportunities to play with some pretty incredible legends of the music um, in in Ambrose Akin Musier's project, uh, we were slated to play at Jazz Lincoln Center in March, at the end of March, and that project's called Banyan, and I was really looking forward to doing that, and we were going to be recording, too. Um, and because everything is on hold here, we nothing has really been rescheduled. Um, but there's there are a lot of other things. I had a couple different tours scheduled for my band. I was the supposed to be the guest artist at this really great festival in Cortona, Italy that my friend Ohad Talmor is the musical director for and um, also at, at this school in Geneva called the AMR Conservatory. I was supposed to be a guest artist there at the end of May, but this has all been canceled. So um, for me, the work, the work that I'm missing, it's less about the money for me, but it's more about the opportunities that are missed, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I think that's kind of been an across the board thing. It's hard to it's it's hard to even fathom that really a lot of this started around March 13th, and to think about before March 13th what things were like and what people were looking forward to. I mean, I even know just talking to musicians, there were so many things with spring and summer and the renewal that were kind of popping up. So. Um, I don't know, I, I guess it almost puts kind of a microscope on how little control we have over things. Yeah, exactly, definitely. Um, on, on the other hand, it's like from all the bleakness of everything, uh, I, I know that we'll build everything back up to some kind of sense of a new normal. Um, it might take a long time for that to happen. But on the other hand, it's giving a lot of us time to reflect and really check in with what matters, you know, friends and family and older projects that I hadn't sat down and really, really, really listened to, um, and taking time to reflect on the lives that have been lost uh, is a really deep, deep, uh, deep hurt that came from um, Lee Conus's passing this past week. Um, yeah. Yeah. So well, we were yeah. we were so sad to see him go, and sad to that he couldn't come back from the from the illness. And um, so I was just re I was just listening to um, this last album that the Nanette put out with him called Old Songs New. Yeah. But I, I was fortunate to record with him, and we played our last concert um, last year. And yeah, it was just. It's just been difficult to lose people like that who you look up to and you you thought you weren't done with, you know, um, and that you thought they weren't done, but they're done, <laughs> you know. I yeah. mean, they're done in the yeah. physical in this in this world. They're done in this world, but they're not they're not done in other realms. And we obviously still have their music to remember, so we're lucky that way. Without a doubt. Um, so. You know, we're going to, I guess the one thing I do want to piggyback off of that, but I got a question, is, you know, I've been thinking jazz is a realm where it, very few people make a whole lot of money or have the stature that other genres do. So a lot of what jazz does in the community is out of love, and they're going to do it no matter what, no matter what kind of hardships or no matter what is thrown at them. It's, 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 it's really a labor of love, and I think that's the thing that's so reassuring about the jazz community, not only... I mean, I'm obviously biased, but there's a, there's there's also a part of me that understands that I've seen a lot of walks of life, and I've been fortunate to really follow the jazz community and to really document what you guys are doing, and I find you all to be some of the finest, 
specimens on the planet, and it's always an honor to be able to cover what you're doing and who you are. And I think there's a grit and there's a natural strength and resilience that that goes through what you all do. And I, and I, that's I, like when I think about recovery, I think it's it's just not even a question of that. But I also been thinking too. I think there's going to be a lot of people in in a lot of the arts, especially maybe in LA, that are TV and film and, and music that have made a lot of money that have probably embraced this because they don't have to worry about money. They don't have to worry about another project. They don't have to run around like crazy. They get to spend time with their family. There might be a lot of artists that may not come back or come back in a limited capacity after this. Yeah. I can see that being a reality too. Um, even with musicians who I know here who are right on the edge of right they're right on the edge of not being able to afford rent here in New York. Um so I yeah. I see I I've already started to see some artists moving back in with their families um yeah. in in other locations. Uh but that's been a slow that's been a slow process and it's not that many artists, but I understand what you're saying and I, I'm hoping it's not like that, but yeah, we have to become more creative in the ways we make, make money. Um, I started really doing a lot of teaching on Zoom, the teaching platform that a lot of, I'm sure you've heard of it and seen it. Yeah. And it's been helpful for me. Um, I'm, I'm, I have new students since all of this started. I've been teaching composition and saxophone and woodwinds and music cognition. So I've been embracing some of the skills that I've I've been building um, for the past couple decades, and I'm glad that I have what I have. Um, and then I've also applied to a, a number of uh, artist relief grants, and I've received um, almost every single one that I applied for, which is really positive, you know. So I'm going to be okay personally, but um, it just depends how long everything is going to be on hold like this. I'm, I'm envisioning that we won't see venues here really seriously opening up until the fall. So that's, yeah. that's, that's going to be a, a very stark reality for many of us, um, especially in New York, who are relying on performance work um like myself Absolutely. so yeah but i've but i've been very grateful for the support um that i've seen from many people reaching out for lessons i've been very grateful for that so so with with the idea of coming back in mind my question is what realizations do you hope both musician and audience member gets from this experience as we come back and return to live music I, in my mind, I feel like people are going to want music more than ever and want the experience of music more than ever. I have this sort of rosy, ro rose-colored glasses vision of what it's going to be like <laughs> and that we're all, we'll all be embraced for the artists and musicians who we are to provide these moments of, like, you know, people will really value the experience of a live performance that, and realize how much it can't be captured on, you know. It's, I mean, we've, we're doing our best on these platforms like Zoom and, and FaceTime and things like that and sending videos back and forth, but the feeling of being at a live performance is very unique. Um, so I'm hoping people will realize how special that is. But yeah, there's the other side of being fearful of coming into a space that is crowded. Um, and I'm not sure how... I mean, I feel like the, this whole thing is causing a big unified trauma, and I'm not sure how long people are going to, or if people are going to trust um, spaces very quickly. Um, and, you know, obviously we've been told by the CDC and other other authorities that we shouldn't even really be touching for a long time, you know. And that idea of going to a venue and seeing friends and family and not being able to hug or touch each other is really sad to me. So I'm not sure. The other side of it is that people won't go out as much. Um, but I'm hopeful that they will, you know. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of questions that are still in the air. I did see an article today about vaccinations that are being worked on, and they're really expediting it between federal agencies and a whole host of, like, private people. I 
I think the thing is, and I remember when this started, I was really kind of thinking about how, you know, the economy and everything got built up so high and things were going so well. There's so much to lose by this just getting totally decimated to the ground. So I think behind the scenes, what we may not see right now, is I think there's an expedited hustle to get things moving in a direction where they can, I mean, because you obviously have to go to testing and there's a lot of things that go into it, but I think that there's going to be a level of this that's going to get ramped up that we don't even, we don't even know right now. We just have no idea. So hopefully that's a part of this hopeful process that we can see that something comes to fruition that is like a flu shot or something like that that can be administered so we don't have to go through all of this what if anymore, you know. Um, if you do get, you know, an antibody or a vaccination, then it's a whole new ball game and we can, uh, have some kind of comfort in that. Um, so anyway, that, that's another part yeah. of the matrix of figuring all this out. So hopefully, you know, that, that will help things out because I just think this spreading on for too long is going to be really hard for, you know, not only businesses, but for others too to kind of pick back up and go back in so yeah we'll just have to see so um but uh at any rate i guess my final question to you is what can the listener out there do for the jazz musician community that will be beneficial to help them out prior to getting back to live music and some level of normalcy I think just making the hang, you know, coming out and supporting musicians who are doing these live streams, as strange as it might feel. Um, last night I had, I made dinner with my partner and watched a, a live stream of a friend who's doing a CD release party, you know, on Facebook, a solo piano CD release party for his album that came out. And it was, you know, it was nice to, to share in those moments and sit at my table and eat my dinner at the same time. So there's some benefit to that. And then we purchased his album. So it's just, there's little steps that we can take by supporting and showing up, showing up to the live stream, showing up to the YouTube channels and checking out what people are doing for live stream work on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Um, and then buying merch, buying CDs and buying albums, LPs, MP3 downloads, um, and spreading the word to everybody about doing that. It's the, it, liter literally every little bit helps, you know. Wonderful. Yeah, I actually talked to Joshua Espinosa this week. I'd seen him about a year ago in town, and he was doing a remote in Baltimore with Warren Wolf and... I didn't get in on time to see it, but it was one of those things where they had sold like a virtual ticket. And then um, mm -hmm. there's a local musician here in Kansas City. Her name is Jackie Myers. She's from Austin. And she has a lot of live remotes. And we've been really tuning in and doing a Venmo to her and, and just trying to support the cats here in town. So, um, okay. yeah. So, at any rate, Caroline, thank you for taking a little time out to talk about, you know, the state of our world. It's a very unique thing. I think this is probably one of the very few times in our lifetimes that we're going to see something where the entire globe is a part of something, not just, a, you know, an epicenter or a country. It's all of us are in this together. So, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I appreciate so, you reaching out. It's, yeah. It's nice, that, I nice think, to touch in, touch base. Yeah. Without a doubt, this is probably, I think, this is our third interview, I believe. I think we... Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, but at any rate, thank you. Um, I am, uh, you know, going to keep putting the word out there and uh, and then just being hopeful. That's that's all we can do right now. Yeah, sending you a lot of love and, and wishing all the best for you and your family's health and safety. Absolutely. We're doing the same. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Stay safe. And okay. uh, we all kind of keep our chin up. Definitely. Thank you so much, cool. Joe. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Chicago, New York, Kansas City, and spots all over the globe giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Caroline for her time and stories. 
If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.